Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So we've got a few selections for today. Um, these have already gone out to premium members. They went out last night uh, or yesterday afternoon for premium members. Um, but these are the ones that I've, uh, I like for today. And we'll start off with the 2 mile 2 Watergate Cup um, at Chester. And I'm really pleased to see the Grand Vizier top rated. Um, I think he will run a really big race. I did highlight him. Whoop highlighted him for this race back here on august the 16th um he dropped to 93 at that point frustratingly he was then entered um in a doncaster cup and for some reason i don't know why they allowed him to run the horses that were he was up against were rated 103 116 117 and 117 and you know he was at least 10 pounds wrong with all of the rivals so he was only going to finish fourth or fifth he finished fourth. Um, he won seven thousand pound and went up and went up four pounds. Is that going to affect his chance here in this forty grand race to win, which he could actually win? Yeah, it is going to affect it. I think that was really, really poor placement. The only thing that could work in his favour is that actually it was a really good run last time, um, finishing not that far behind Trushan, Sweet William, and Broom. And if that is his actual, um, you know, he he gave his true running, then I think he'll take all of the beating here. Um, and he's currently available at 10 to 1, which I think is a big price, considering he's finished second in the Chester Cup before. Um, he wants this sort of trip. He wants two mile two plus. If we actually look at his wins and places. Um, so he, he finished second over two mile five. He's finished third over two mile five. Second over two mile two. Second over two mile two. Second over two mile five. He's one over two mile three, and then only a few runs has he performed anywhere near that level over two mile. Yeah, he did win a handicap of 90, and he finished third in the Shogo Cup of 94. This is his trip. This is key. Um, and I think he'll be staying on really strongly, and hopefully he can be staying on uh, to actually win the race. And I think he's a decent price at 10s. I would have liked him if he was running off 93. He's not. He's running off 97. But I still think he'll go really well. The second horse I want to talk about is in the um, uh, the six furlong race at Ripon, and the horse I like here is a bit of a bit of a surprise, maybe Hyperfocus. Hyperfocus is nine, um, but he does have some course and distance form. He has won at Ripon not that long ago, back in April. He won at, at Ripon. Um, that came off a mark of 93. The jockey took three pounds off, so he was effectively running off 90. Here he runs off 91 with David Allen riding. He's currently rated 91. Forgive him his last run. It was only a week ago. These sprinters can can go you know, back and forward with their form. His two runs before that, I actually think were pretty good. He was third of 11 behind Call Me Ginger at Chester. Um, and he was ninth of... 18 in the Great St. Wilfred. And to be fair, I think that was a decent Great St. Wilfred anyway. Um, you know, Wob Wob Wob's Frank to that form in third. I think this is <clears throat> this is down to his level. And I also think this field size is about right, 13. If you get too many, because of his um the way he goes forward, if you get 20 runners in the race, they kind of take each other on at the front. And I'm hoping that he's kind of left alone a little bit. Um, you know, I still think there's going to be horses going forward. Indian Creek, Brazen Bolt, um, potentially Glorious Angel could all go forward. But because they are not, there's not 20 of them. They're not pushing each other along. They're just going at a nice pace at the front. And I'm hoping that Hyperfocus, off his low mark, off his 91, can run a really big race here. And he's he's not a bad price, actually. He is currently, let's just refresh this page. <clears throat> He's currently available at eleven to one, which I think is fair. I think he will. He, I think he'll go well um, at Ripon, where I think he likes. I think David, uh, him, sorry, um, likes his track. So does David, and I'm hoping for a big run. Moving on to the three forty, which is the Cambridgeshire, and the horse I like here is one of our old um, previous winners. It's Killybegs Warrior. So Killybegs Warrior won for us at Newmarket um, earlier this season at twenty five to one. And then did disappoint uh, in a very competitive handicap at Goodwood. Probably the soft ground went against him. 
bounced back to form in fourth um, in the Skybet finale at York and then ran another good race at the Curra, went fourth. Now, I think the key for him here could be both his jockey in James Doyle. I think James um, is obviously a very good jockey, but I also think he'll know that he can go forward and get going on him earlier than previously because he stays a mile and two. So he can be up there in the, in the the you know, just behind the leaders and kick on early enough that he can actually bring his stamina in and maybe that the others don't catch him. Um, we highlighted him when he was 25s. Uh, for premium members uh, yesterday he's now available at 18 so i still think that's a decent price he's the highest rated three-year-old in the race um, alongside of Yedo. and i think he deserves his his position as the highest rated three-year-old i think he's got some really good form this is i think his optimum trip even i think he wants a mile and two but a mile and one having been tried over a mile they obviously think he's got a bit of speed about him as well um, so yeah, I'd be really hopeful of a big run here from Killy Briggs Warrior, likely to go right up with the pace. You know, if he can sit second or third and then kick on for, for James Doyle, um, I think it's a really positive jockey booking for Killy Briggs Warrior. Moving on to the 425 at Haydock. Um, there's a horse that I quite like here. And again, this is ground dependent. And I think I think he's getting his ground this time, and that is Empire State of Mind. So the ground is soft, heavy in places, and the last time he actually ran on heavy, I thought he ran a really good race when he finished seventh in the Lincoln earlier this season. That actually came off a mark of 99, um, and Taylor took another five off. Now, despite running okay, Empire State of Mind, he has dropped down to 96, so you know, he's three pounds better off than when he ran in the Lincoln. Granted, the jockey actually took five off as well. But he's got the visor on as well. And if that visor just brings out a bit more improvement, off 96, I think he's very, very dangerous. Um, I think he'll get the, a nice pace to run it. I think he'll be able to track um, most of these or some of these that are going to go forward, including Maywaki and probably Millibusk. Um, if he can track those, where are they? Maywalk is in five, Milibosk in six, Empire State of Mind in five. I think that's perfect. If he can track those, um, I think his ability to handle this ground will really uh, help him. And I think he can go really close here. Now, there has been a lot of money, as expected, for Enfajar. Um, you know, the three-year-old could bounce back here. I think Empire State of Mind is a decent price at 11 to 1. And I'm hoping for a big run here from Empire State of Mind. Moving on to the 4.30, the Prelude Handicap um, over two mile at Market Raisin. And the horse I like here has a bit of uh, Market Raisin form and it's Glorious Zoff. Now, Glorious Zoff three runs ago ran here. He ran in the summer hurdle and he was beaten by Two Friendly and Castel Gandolfo. Now, Two Friendly has proven that he was uh, quite nicely ahead of his mark. He won at Market Raisin, um, Two Friendly did. Then he came back out and won at um where did he then win he won at perth he previously finished second at um, cartmel and he'd also won at fakenham so that horse was in red hot form second was castel gandolfo who was effectively running off a mark of um 120 whilst glorious zoff was running off 127 so zoff was carrying seven pounds more effectively than castel gandolfo now tomorrow Glorious Zoff will actually be carrying one pound less effectively than Castel Gandolfo. So that's an eight pound swing. Jack Hogan rides Glorious Zoff instead of Castel Gandolfo. Yes, Paddy Brennan's on Castel Gandolfo, but I think the uh, weight off Glorious Zoff's back is really key here. I think I think those two are gonna gonna go really close. The two um, Fergal O'Brien horses, Glorious Zoff and Castel Gandolfo, they've got the form of the course. But I think uh, Glorious Soft will actually come out on top of those two. Both of those will be weighted with and finishing strongly, but hopefully the weight will just tell for Glorious Soft and he'll be able to finish a little bit more strongly than, a little bit more strongly, a little bit stronger than Castel Gandolfo. And I think he'll run a really big race here um, in the Prelude Handicap. Connections, Diva Racing have won this race before. They won it a few years ago with... Let me just double check when it was, not 2021. So 2021, uh, Fergal won it. And in 2020, Diva Racing won it. 
with Marine One. So hopefully they can combine this year to win it with um who did I say? Glorious off. Moving on to two more races, uh, two more horses that I like. One in the 525 at um, Newmarket. I really like Accidental Agent here. I think he's now down to a mark that he can be competitive off. He'd be running off an effective 95. Now, whilst that's not as low as the last couple of runs when, excuse my voice, uh, when Mia Nichols was taking the ride, she got her timings just a little bit wrong. Um, wanted to go a bit earlier. Now, Georgia Doby has ridden um, Accidental Agent significantly more. She, she's ridden it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight times. Whereas Mia Nichols was having her first couple of runs, uh, first couple of rides on the horse. Now that George is back on, I think she'll be in the right, pa right place at the right time. And Alex Dental Agent is definitely handicapped to go close in a race. Um, has got course and distance form, so there's no issue there. And yeah, I think Accidental Agent is going to go really close here because I think the smaller field will also mean that they're closer. Previous fields of 15 and 12 have just meant he's a bit too far back, whereas he'll be closer here because there's only 10 in the race. And hopefully he'll be running on um, past all of these to win quite nicely. So Accidental Agent is very interesting for me there at sevens. And the final one is at Chelmsford. Um, and this is a bit of a, a surprise one, maybe a bit of a bigger price than whoops. And this one that I'm going to uh, select here is in a terrible race, but I really like him. It's Jamira Bridge at 14s. Jamira Bridge is running here off 49 and he's back at Chelmsford. So he ran at Chelmsford three runs ago off 53. So a four pound higher mark. He finished fourth, beaten six lengths. He was held up and ran on strongly at the finish. Now, Dara Keenan, um, I think will give him a bit of a better ride here. I think he'll be more, he'll be closer to the pace. And Dara has actually finished second on him before over course and distance when running on strongly. So I think he'll know that I need to get the going a bit earlier. That came off a mark of 49 when he finished second on him. He rides him again off 49. I think he can go really close here. You know, some of his earlier form at Chelmsford was decent. Um, he finished third off 52. He's also one off uh, 48. So I think this is about the right handicap mark for him. And at 14s, I thought he'd be single figures, to be honest, um, in this race. I think he's going to go really close here. He'll be finishing strongly. He just needs a clear run. That's, he doesn't always get that. But hopefully with a clear run, he can run a really big race here. So they are my selections for the day. Um, the Grand Vizier in the Watergate Cup at 10s. Hyperfocus in the City of Dales Handicap at 11s. Killybegs Warrior at, uh, was at 25s, is now 18s. Empire State of Mind at 11s. Glorious is off to win the Prelude Handicap for Fergal O'Brien in Diva Racing at, I didn't actually give a price for that one, did I? 7s. Accidental Agent at 7s. I think um, Georgia will be will have him close enough. And finally, Jumaira Bridge at fourteen to one. Um, as long as he gets a clear run, I think he will go very close. Thanks for listening, and fingers crossed we can have a few winners.